Hello and welcome to Nysora's YouTube channel. Today we're tackling a topic that has been a subject of debate in anesthesiology for decades. I'm Dr. Hadzik and in this episode we are diving into the groundbreaking study by Dr. Imre von Herewege and the Nysora Europe team in Zoll, Genk, Belgium. They published a research report suggesting that spinal anesthesia in patients with aortic stenosis is actually safe. Hi. My name is Dr. Imre van Herwege and I'm an anesthesiologist at Nazoria Europe, so again in Belgium. We use spinal anesthesia as a standard of care in all patients that receive lower limb surgery, so included in aortic stenosis patients. Historically, spinal anesthesia was a no-go for aortic stenosis patients. This stands was so firm that it even became a notorious question in anesthesiology oral exams to trip up students. The concern? The spinal anesthesia causes sympathetic block, potentially leading to a dangerous hypotension in these patients. And although this fear was not evidence-based, it was almost a rite of passage in anesthesiology exams to trip up students with this scenario. Picture this, a patient with aortic stenosis given spinal anesthesia becomes profoundly hypotensive, requires escalating doses of vasopressors, and in the worst case scenario, does not survive. This outcome often led to a failing grade in oral board examination to the point that many preparatory courses for oral board examinations strictly or explicitly advise their students not to mention using spinal anesthesia in any patients with aortic stenosis. But as with many aspects of medicine, our understanding evolves with new research and evidence. Although low-dose spinal anesthesia has been the anesthetic of choice of Nysora for decades, this video discusses a groundbreaking research report that challenges the traditional view that spinal anesthesia is contraindicated in patients with aortic stenosis. Induction of spinal or general anesthesia in patients with aortic stenosis carries the risk of precipitous hypotension, which can lead to coronary hypoperfusion, cardiac ischemia, and cardiac arrest. Historically, spinal anesthesia has been considered contraindicated in patients with aortic stenosis due to the risk of spinal anesthesia-induced sympathetic block and severe hypotension. However, no actual studies were available to inform clinical practice on the risk of spinal anesthesia with aortic stenosis. In our practice at Nysora on both sides of the Atlantic, a low-dose isobaric spinal has been often used in aortic stenosis patients having lower limb surgery for decades. But in this research report published in January 2024 issue of the RAPM journal, we share our experience with the effects of spinal anesthesia on hemodynamics and perioperative outcome in patients with aortic stenosis. The report studied 35 patients with diagnosed significant aortic stenosis undergoing various surgical procedures on the lower extremities under spinal anesthesia. And the findings were compelling. Contrary to the long-standing belief, we found that spinal anesthesia could be safely administered in these patients. Well, let's break down the methodology. The Nasoro team used a comprehensive preoperative assessment and vigilant monitoring during and after the hip and lower extremity surgical procedures. And interestingly, the incidence of significant hypotension and the need for vasopressors was not as high as historically anticipated. The occurrences of hypotension with spinal anesthesia were rather mild and did not typically require more than a couple of doses of vasopressors, if at all. And although the report did not formally compare the hemodynamic outcome of general anesthesia versus spinal in these patients, our data suggests greater cardiovascular stability with low-dose spinal anesthesia than with general anesthesia. Secondly, it emphasizes the importance of individualized patient care. Each case must be evaluated on its own merits, considering the patient's specific condition and the surgery being performed. In our study, only 23% of patients in the spinal anesthesia cohort required vasoactive intervention. Of these, only 3 patients or 9% required norepinephrine infusion for a short bit and 17% received a couple of phenylephrine boluses, whereas 14% received only ephedrine. 
There were no unscheduled ICU admissions, cardiac arrests, or mortality that occurred within 30 days after spinal anesthesia and surgery. We retrieved 35 patients with aortic stenosis that received spinal anesthesia, 16 in a moderate aortic stenosis group, 19 in a severe aortic stenosis group. After analyzing these patients, we couldn't find any severe adverse events, nor could we find any mortality. It's not just about saying yes or no to spinal anesthesia. It is about understanding the patient's overall cardiovascular status, existing comorbidities, and how they might respond to the anesthetic. All patients in this report received an arterial line for continuous blood pressure monitoring that allows an early detection of any hypertension and immediate feedback on the efficacy of treatment measures. Still, based on our data and experience, this may be an overkill for many patients, suggesting that with the low-dose spinal anesthesia as opposed to general anesthesia that always causes hypertension, a lower level of invasiveness may be needed when it comes to monitoring. While the severity of the aortic stenosis did affect the incidence and degree of hypertension, that difference was not substantial suggesting that low-dose spinal anesthesia actually imparts a remarkable hemodynamic stability as long as the block of the sympathetic nervous system is low, as it was in our report. This is why we emphasize that these results apply only to low-dose spinal anesthesia and low-level spinal anesthesia. We use isobaric bepivacaine in order for the sympathetic block not being too high. We use a low dose of local anesthetic we use 10 milligrams of bepivacaine. Thirdly, we perform the spinal anesthesia at a level of L3, L4. And lastly, if there would be any hemodynamic deterioration, we use that vasoactive medication. Our LinkedIn community responded positively and enthusiastically to this study. However, some of our LinkedIn community members remarked that we really need to be careful with the high degree aortic stenosis. However, the same recommendations or concern exists for general anesthesia, which always causes hypertension. This publication encourages us to question and reevaluate other long-held medical beliefs. It is a reminder that medicine is an ever-evolving field, and what was once considered a textbook truth can change overnight with new evidence. To conclude, the study by Dr. Imre von Herewege and the NYSORA Europe team is a significant contribution to the field of anesthesiology. It challenges all dogmas and opens the door for safer, more effective anesthesia care for patients with aortic stenosis. I'm Dr. Hadzik. Thank you for joining us on the NYSORA's YouTube channel. Stay tuned for more insights and don't forget to like this video, share and subscribe to our channel for more content like this.